Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a warm light effect on a photograph. This is the before, and it's a good photograph. There's nothing really wrong with this, but we can make it more interesting by adding in some warmth into the picture. Here's the final effect right there. Adds a lot of pizzazz and interest into the picture. Okay, let me go ahead and show you how this whole thing is done. I'm just going to delete all of these layers up here. We'll do all this stuff brand new. Delete that. There we go. Now, the first thing I always do whenever I'm working on a picture is to make a copy of the background layer. And I work on the background layer and up. Even if I'm not touching it, that's just kind of a habit I'm in. In this instance, I want to make a little adjustment on the picture. Just examine the picture, see if there's anything you're not really happy with and then adjust as needed. Now right here there's a little bit of a branch showing or tree trunk right there on the right hand side. That's kind of strange. I'm just going to get rid of that first before we do anything else and we'll do that with the clone stamp tool which is right over here. And let's just see what our settings are on that. So I'm using a soft brush. Right now it's set at 87 pixels. That's fine. And I'll just clone stamp just to the left here, hold the Alt key down and click and go just to the right and then just, just kind of get rid of that. There we go. This is just not really needed. And if you have any kind of duplication happening like that, it looks a little bit obvious. Just do a bit of random clone stamping in there to kind of confuse things a bit, confuse the eye. And there we go. Okay, so that just cleans up that side. And we can now focus on the image. The next thing you want to do is you want to examine the image and make any little adjustments that you might want to do on the brightness or contrast. We'll do that with an adjustment layer in here. Go up to Layer, come down to New Adjustment Layer, and let's do a Levels Adjustment. Now the Levels shows you the values in the picture. Your black values on the left hand side, your white on the right hand side. Notice there's a little bit of white right there. That's going to be up here or right here. Probably right up in here. And there's not much real black. Most of the values are below the mid-level. Here's your mid-level gray. So most values are below your mid-level. All I'm going to do here just to kind of spice the picture up is to pull the left side up a little bit. About that far. That takes the any the darkest dark and moves it into the black range. This is our black point. So I've moved the black point up into the bottom or the darkest part of our darks. And I'll do the same thing on the whites. I'm going to pull the whites over a little bit. And maybe about 230, 231. That's just going to brighten up the whites. So I, I've darkened the darkness out just a little bit and brightened the whites up a little bit. Adds a bit more punch onto the onto the image. Just close that down. We can see that up here. Let us hide and show that. There we go. So it's before and then with a levels adjustment. It's just added a bit of punch back into the picture, a bit more interest. Okay. Now let's begin working on adding in some coloration onto this. The first thing we'll do is to put in a new layer up here, do a fill layer this time. So layer, new fill layer, solid color. Choose OK. Here we go. Now in here, I want kind of a dark blue way down here someplace. The color I actually used in my example, let me just type that in, was one, two, three, four zeros and a three and a nine. There we go. So I'm over here on full saturation and down in the dark range and choose OK. So that just gives us a nice dark blue. Now we're going to be using this to put into the image up here and actually use it to block out the dark blue part of the shadow areas. So it'll just take the, the blues out, leaving the warmer tones in the shadow area. 
So what I want to do is I want to exclude this color from our image, and we do that by using a blending mode. Come down here to exclusion. There it goes. There it is with, there's without, and you can see how it's just kind of blocking out some of the color range. There's a bit of purple showing in there, and that's fine. We'll go ahead and work with that because it's a bit more interest in our color. Okay, so that takes care of that. Now I want to warm the picture back up again. It's a bit on the coolish side. So let's warm it back up with a photo filter. Again, I'll do this as a layer. Go up here to layer and new adjustment layer and photo filter right there. Choose OK. The default is the warming filter and that's exactly what we want. I'll just leave that as is. Leave everything at their default settings. And that gives us a nice warmth into our picture. So you have a nice setup now with some, we got, we're taking care of our adjust, adjusted our cools, pulled some blue out, and then added in some warmth to the whole picture. Now let's come in and tweak our contrast in here. And we'll do that above these two adjustment layers. So again, another layer, layer, adjustment layer, brightness contrast, choose OK. There we go. So here I can actually tweak my brightness a bit and I can tweak my contrast a bit. The numbers I actually used on my example were 21 for the brightness. You can just type that in and then 22 on the contrast. Again, you can just type that in right there. And that brings the contrast back in again because when we did these color adjustments up here, we lost a bit of contrast. So we just brought that back in again at this point. So there, there's our our contrast. So that's the basic setting now. We have our basic coloration. Now what we want to do is we want to add a warmth over here on the left hand side that will actually spill over the image and I want to have some coolness on the right hand side. And we'll do that with actually painting on some layers. Now to show this I want to back out a little bit. So I'll just use the zoom tool, hold the Alt key down and click back out a little bit like that. And let's do a new layer. Let's do the warm side first. And for that, I want to have a nice orange. So let's go into our orange area here. So we kind of around like that. The actual color I use, actually, I'm pretty close to that, but it's F E A and then 100. There we are. So full brightness, full contrast, you know, full saturation over here, brightness, saturation. We're up in the corner. And it's a nice mid orange, as you can see right down there. Now, on this, I want to have a big batch of orange kind of right over here, upper left hand side. That's where the highlight is. That's where the light source is. It's coming from this side. So, we want to put our bright orange bit right there. Grab the paintbrush, and that tool is way too large. Let me bring the size down a bit. Okay, up a little bit from that. So, I want pretty big brush. So, it kind of comes over the corner, kind of covers the whole corner and hits into that bright light spot of her hair up there. And I'll tap once here and I'll back up a little bit and tap once there. It just gives me a big bright orange blob on the left side. Now of course we don't want to have that, we want to blend this into the picture so we're going to adjust the blending mode on this and that's right here. And using screen actually brings that in. Now the screen effect leaves the color on top of a lot of the dark areas as you can see here. So we have some color on top and that's what I want. I want to have that effect as if it's actually bleaching out that image a bit as if the light source is right over here and it's kind of spilling into the lens and bleaching out the light. That's just fine. But it's still too too strong, too hard. So let's bring the opacity down a bit and bring it down to about 65 or 66. You can actually just type that in here if you want to. Hit the enter key. There we go. 65. That just brings it down. But again, I want to have that spillover effect on top of that tree trunk. And there we go. So it's just it's just touching the edge of our figure and it's spilling in here. Gives us a nice warmth on that side. Now to contrast this, I want to have some coolness over here on the right hand side. Exact same idea. A couple little different details. We'll get on the right hand side. So let's do a new layer. This time I want to have a cyan or a blue color over here. So let's go ahead and click on our foreground colors, pull us up, and we're going to be up into our blue range up in here. You want something that, that's pretty close, you know, complementary. And you can, you can kind of see that 
on that dividing line, when it gets kind of kind of hard to see kind of kind of a weird eye effect happening in there, that you're you're pretty close to the right color at that point. And the one that I actually used, I'll just type it in here. It was zero zero C B F E. So there's the actual color that I used right there. Okay, now choose okay. But anything in kind of that mid blue range. And then we're going to put in some blue down in this area, just kind of the opposite of up there. So let's get to our paintbrush again. Same size, same trick. Just a little bit of blue on the right hand side. Now I don't want to screen this this time because I don't want to have the blue sitting on top of anything. I just want to add the blueness into the dark parts of our area and lose the light parts. So blending modes again, but this time just darken. And that darkens the whole area down. Notice how it doesn't have that on top of effect that we had over here at the screen, but it kind of changes the coloration of everything into a blue coloration. Again, it's too strong by a long shot, so I need to bring this down a bit. Let's bring our opacity back down. I'm going to bring it way down. Kind of in the in the mid 20s somewhere. I just want to have that kind of a coolness happening down there that makes this warmth pop out more. Okay, that's good. You can see the difference here. There it is without and here it is with. And when we put that in, that coolness over here, it really brings out the warmth on the left hand side. And there we go. That's how to do this warm light effect. Now, a cute trick in here I'll show you. Click on the top layer and then hold down the, the shift the control the alt keys and then hit the E key all at once so it's shift control alt and E and what that does is it takes all of the visible layers and merges those into a new layer it's just kind of fun it makes it really easy to look at your before and after so let's hide all those adjustment layers so there's the before and there is the after. Let me click on their bottom layer. So there's before and there's the after. You see how the nice coloration added in here and the nice warmth happening and it seems like the sun is just off of the camera edge over there. And there it is. That's how you do the warm light effect. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.